Hi everyone, welcome to RAW Online. I am Dr. Priyadarshini Shanmugam, Professor of Microbiology. This session is going to be on systemic mycosis. Okay, so what are the learning objectives for the session? What is the definition of systemic mycosis? Then the different types of systemic mycosis which are very important that is coccidioidomycosis, histoplasmosis, then we will be looking at paracoccidioidomycosis, blastomycosis. For all these four important infections, we will be seeing the clinical features, the lab diagnosis as well as the treatment. Okay. So, what is this systemic mycosis? Whenever you say mycosis, S E S means it is plural, S I S means singular. Myco means anything to do with fungi. So, systemic mycosis means affecting the whole uh, many organ systems. Okay. So, they are also called as true systemic mycosis or endemic mycosis. They are endemic to certain areas. Okay. They do not spread all throughout the world. They are endemic to certain parts of the globe. So, that is why they are also known as endemic mycosis. So, what is the main feature of these systemic mycosis is that the infection originates at one site. Okay. So, mainly all these four types we get the inf infection by inhaling the spores. So, when you inhale it you know that it is going to go into your lungs and then from the lungs it will spread to the other body sites. Systemic mycosis includes these four important fungal infections okay, which can cause uh, multiple organ involvement in addition to the lungs. Okay. So, you have coccidioidomycosis, histoplasmosis, blastomycosis and paracoccidioidomycosis. The terms are a little difficult, but uh, it is good to know these. So, in the case of these uh, systemic mycosis, what is the common feature which puts all these four organisms together? All of them are thermally dimorphic fungi. Thermally means it is temperature determined and dimorphic means having two different morphologies. So, just imagine the fungi, uh, the four which I mentioned uh, just in the previous slide, they exist in nature and in the soil as saprophytes okay? and uh, they can show two different morphologies. So, the, they can exist as a yeast at 37 degrees centigrade that is the spherical forms. Okay? Usually, this 37 degrees centigrade is our human body temperature. So, they exist as yeast forms at 37 means in the human body and they exist as mold that is the mycelial form at 25 degrees centigrade that is at lower temperatures. The geographic distribution varies. Okay, I told you they are all endemic. So, they are endemic to different areas in the world and most of these infections we inhale the spores of these fungi. It goes to the lungs. It sets up an infection in the lungs and then it can get spread to the other parts of the body. Sometimes even normal healthy individuals can get affected. Okay. So, the first one we are going to see is coccidioidomycosis. This organism causes a primary infection of the lungs. Okay. The name of the disease is coccidioidomycosis and it is caused by a fungus, a dimorphic fungus, coccidioides imitis and coccidioides posadaceae. This imitis only is more common and this organism is a soil saprophyte. And this disease is confined to the southwestern states of the United States, this northern Mexico, Central and South America. So, where you are expecting a semi-arid climate, okay, it is a dry kind of climate which you see in the deserts. It is rare in India and all age groups can get affected, but children are predominantly affected. So, coming on to the fungus, coccidioides imitis, as I told earlier, it is a dimorphic fungus. But at 37 degrees centigrade, among all these other four, this is the only one which forms spherules. It does not form a yeast form, but it forms a big spherical mass known as a spherule, which can be 30 to 60 microns in a diameter, extending up to a size of about 200 microns in the tissues. And this will be filled with numerous pores. Okay? So, this is the picture that you get at 37 degrees centigrade. And at 25 degrees centigrade, however, you will get septate, hyphae. Hyphae are only the single strands which form the mycelial form or the mold like form. So, these hyphae are septate and each septa, no, it can fragment into arthroconidia. Arthro means, you know, joints. So, these look like joint spaces and they are barrel shaped. So, these arthroconidia will be forming this septae and these can break, okay, they can fragment and these become the spores 
and these are the spores that we inhale in order to get infected. And these arthroconidia individual size is 3 to 4 microns in size, ok. So, this organism does not have a budding yeast stage, ok, unlike the other 3. So, I told, totally told you 4 organisms out of which is coccidioides does not have a budding yeast state, ok. And it can grow any time, anywhere between 25, 20 degrees centigrade to 40 degrees centigrade and can grow up in a highly alkaline pH of even up to 9. So, as I told you, those arthroconidia, they fragment and they are released as spores. Some of them become airborne and they can get inhaled. And then once it gets inhaled, you know, right, it can go into your lungs. It can sit in the lungs and it can produce this ferules and containing numerous endospores, okay. And this keeps on continuing throughout the body. So, as I already told you, this ferule formation occurs and then this can get engulfed by our alveolar macrophages. The macrophages can get activated. So, you know, right, once it gets uh, uh, engulfed, it is going to be sitting inside the phagosome. So, the lysosomes of our macrophages will fuse this, fuse with the phagosome and produce a phagolysosome. So, it will have numerous granules which are nothing but toxic chemicals and they are going to kill the organism. But if the organism survives, it can enlarge, this uh, can become rounded and then it forms a, a rounded uh, sac like structure with internal septations. And this sac like structure only becomes the spherule and then you have numerous endospores. Suppose you return this organism to the artificial media or to the soil at about 25 to 30 degrees centigrade, it is going to return to its mycelial stage or the, uh, the thread like stage or the hair like stage, right.